Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with a quick guide for EVE Echoes. This time around, we're taking another look at high-slot weaponry, in this case, missiles. Now, before we jump into that, there is an important announcement, which is that uh, CCP and NetEase have now given us notice that this phase of the beta is ending on January 10th. So let's quickly just cover what that means and what we know going forward. Well, we know that on January 10th, the beta as it currently stands will be shut down. The servers will go offline. You will no longer be able to play EVE Echoes. They've also announced, as we knew before, that yes, all progress is going to be wiped. How far you've got, all the ships you've worked hard on, that kind of thing, those are going to be gone come January 10th. Now, when Alpha went down, it went down for two days, and then we came into Beta. People who were playing in the Alpha got a special bonus to ISK and skill points for when they started into the Beta, so they could jump straight into a whole load of skill points and had a load of bonus ISK to get uh, like a head start. Now, we don't know if this is the end of the beta or if it's just the end of this phase of the beta. They do say this phase of the beta will be ending, so I, I take that to mean that there should be another phase of beta coming, but it could be live. How long will the game be down for on January 10th? We don't know. It might be down for two days. It might be down for a month while they do some development time. We just don't know. We also don't know, so please don't take this as old. Captain Benzie said, I said that alpha players got bonus ISK and bonus skill points when they came into beta. I hope we will get that when we go into live or the next phase of the beta. We'll get a load of bonus ISK and a load of bonus skill points and for the progress that we've made so far. But I can't guarantee that. We might just load in and have be starting from scratch, all of us. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Now, okay, with all that said and done, I don't want to make this video too long me talking about things that aren't actually advertised in the in the thumbnail and the title. We're going to talk about missiles. So I'm here in, I've, I've, I've come out of my usual thrasher. I'm still in a Minmatar ship. This is a Minmatar Talwar, which is a missile boat. And we're going to have a look at fitting this. We're going to have a look at how missiles work. Um, I do recommend pausing this video and going and watching my blowing things up for fun and profit video if you haven't already, just because that talks about how turrets work. And as I talk about how missiles work, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be analysing that alongside how turrets work. I'm going to be comparing it to how turrets work. So it is important you understand how different turrets work. But anyway, before we dump, uh, jump in, it's worth just quickly pointing out that when I say missiles, I mean anything on this list. So let's have a look at what qualifies as a missile. Anything that is a light missile, a rocket, a rapid light missile, a heavy missile, a heavy assault missile, a rapid heavy missile, a cruise missile, or a torpedo counts as a missile. If we're talking about torpedoes, we're still talking about missiles. If we're talking about rockets, we're still talking about missiles. An important point to note, though, is that there is a difference between a light missile and a rapid light missile. There is a difference between a heavy missile and a heavy assault missile. A skill that mentions heavy assault missiles will not benefit heavy missiles. Skills that benefit heavy missiles won't benefit heavy assault missiles. Cool, we clear on that? Good, let's jump right in to looking at the Talwar. I like my destroyers. Destroyers are a lot of fun. I'm skilled heavily into destroyers. I like how fast they are. I like how quick you can move around. Yeah, they can be a bit fragile compared to cruisers, etc. But anyway, let's have a look at this particular one. Now, if we open up the info page for the Talwar, you'll see it's a destroyer. Three high slots, two medium slots, four low slots, three uh, power grid and three defensive rigs. Um, thanks to the recent patch that, recent, uh, that massively buffed destroyers tier three and higher. Now, don't ask what a polarizer module is. I don't honestly know. If someone wants to jump into the comment section down below and tell me what an idiot I am for not understanding that, we'll go ahead. And um, Special mode assault, we'll cover that later on as well. I do mention it in my drone video. It's not overly important to this. We're focusing on missiles. This particular ship, you can see destroyer command gives me a bonus to shield and small missile operation will give me bonus to light missile damage and rocket damage. Again here, light missile damage, anything with the name light missile launcher in it. Rocket damage, anything with the name rocket. Again, light missile uh, damage will not affect uh, will not affect rapid light missiles. Those are a separate thing. So this, of course, if we look at it now, is very much a missile boat. This is a boat that gets bonuses to small missiles. You're not going to be wanting to put projectile turrets on this. Um, you can't put drones on it. We need to look at missiles. So let's have a look at what a missile stat page looks like. So first things first, you'll notice when you look at a missile, um, these tend to have a spread of damage types. Here you can see it's 25% of its damage is electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Straight up 25% across the board. Projectile turrets, as a comparison, tend to be kinetic and explosive. La uh, energy turrets, like the laser turrets, tend to be electromagnetic and thermal. Um, and thermal and kinetic is what you would expect to see on a, project uh, sorry, on a hybrid turret, like a railgun. 
Now you'll notice then below here, if we look at the basic info and the stats, that this is a little bit different to how uh, the turrets work. With turrets, of course, you've got things like your uh, your optimal range, which could be say five kilometers. Then you have your accuracy fall off, which is two kilometers. Um, and then you have like tracking speed. Now to, to explain that very briefly, um, just as a refresher for those who've watched the uh, watched the turret video a while ago, of course, optimal range is the range at which you're best. So five kilometers in the case that I just gave would be best. Accuracy fall off is how you go from optimal, how far it takes to go from optimal range to 50% effectiveness. Um, and then again, from 50% effectiveness to zero. So using those examples, five kilometers optimal range, two kilometer accuracy means you're best at five kilometers. You're gonna be 50% at seven kilometers and you're gonna be 0% at nine kilometers. Hope that makes sense. Tracking speed on turrets is then how fast your turrets turn and track a target. The faster a, uh, faster a target moves, the faster a turret needs to track. I cover that in the, uh, the cruiser video as well, of course. Now you'll notice here that if you look at this rocket launcher, it doesn't have any of that. There is no optimal range, there's no accuracy fall off, there's no tracking speed. Instead we have explosion velocity, explosion radius and missile range. Those are the three that we're going to focus on here. Missile range, don't take it as a set in stone. Basically, missiles track at 100% effectiveness. They will always hit their target as long as the target is within range. In this case, a missile is going to travel 6.91 kilometers before it fades out and fizzles and dies, like a really crappy firework. If your target is within 6.91 kilometers, your missile will hit. There is no two ways about it, it will connect. However, missiles have what's called application. Rather than turrets which kind of graze or you know, hit or penetrate and that kind of thing, depending on your accuracy, depending on target movement speed, that kind of thing, missiles are a little bit trickier. That's what's covered here by explosion velocity and explosion radius. To explain how this works, if we just quickly jump back into the uh, Talwar info page, you'll see at the bottom that a Talwar has a signature radius of 60 meters. Ultimately, the way to think of this is that the shape of your ship in EVE doesn't actually matter. So the fact that a Stabber cruiser is long and thin compared to a Rupture which is short and fat, neither of those are easier targets based on what they look like. It's purely the signature radius. At sort of the game engine level, ships in EVE are little spheres floating through space. So a Talwar is a sphere of 60 meters radius floating through space and that's how you know how hard or easy it is to hit and if we look at then things like uh, its flight velocity a flight velocity of a Talwar is 255 meters per second that means its maximum speed ultimately is going to be that in orbit and your relative speed yada 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 you get my picture you get the drift now, if we look at explosion velocity and explosion radius, explosion radius is naturally, as you'd expect, the size of the explosion. Explosion velocity is how quickly the explosion spreads to cover that full explosion radius. And what this essentially means, this is all to do with damage application. Obviously, the better a missile applies, the higher the damage, the lower it applies, the lower the damage. This means that, for example, the explosion radius if you, your explosion radius is bigger than your target ship, then it does less damage. If you've got an explosion radius, so if we go back to that Talwar, the, explo uh, the signature radius of the Talwar is 60 meters. An explosion radius larger than 60 meters is going to do less damage to a Talwar because the Talwar essentially is fly it's a small ship flying through a big explosion. It, just the explosion does less to it. The smaller the explosion radius, the bigger the damage is going to be in effect. Then you have explosion velocity. As I said, that's how quickly the, the sphere of explosion fills out, how quickly it hits maximum range. Now, it's maximum size, sorry. Now, essentially, this means that, obviously, the faster the explosion velocity, the better it is against a fast-moving target. If you've got a target moving at, say, 300 meters per second, and your explosion is only 150 meters per second, that means, theoretically, the ship that you are firing at is going to get away from the explosion. It's actually going to outrun the explosion. That becomes a problem. To explain how this essentially works, if you imagine that when I fire from my ship at one side to your ship at the other side, the missiles will always track. And as long as the missile's distance that it's traveling is within that 6.91 kilometers, it will hit. As soon as the missile hits the edge of your signature radius, it will explode. You don't really hit the ship, you kind of explode near it. 
So if I'm firing another Tal War, which we've said has a 60 meters uh, radius there, signature radius, so I've gone past it, 60 meters signature radius, here the explosion re radius is 18 meters. That means once the once the rocket gets within sort of that 18 to 60 meters radius, it explodes. That 150 meters per second is how fast the explosion spreads outwards, and as long as the towel war isn't going considerably faster than the 150 meters per second, it will take some damage from the explosion. If the towel war is moving at 300 meters per second, it's going to outrun the explosion. If the towel war was only, say, one meter, like it's a drone or something that's maybe five meters um, in signature radius, then the explosion radius is too big and it's going to do less damage. Now you'll find that with small rockets like this, obviously they're going to have a very fast explosion velocity and a very small explosion radius. That means they're going to do maximum damage against most things. Meaning, obviously, if I shoot against a cruiser or I shoot against a battleship, something that's slow moving and large, these are going to do their maximum damage every single time. The problem is that obviously they're only small rockets, so they're not actually going to do all that much damage. If we flick across to the market and have a look at some of the other missiles on sale, um, or just look at their stats at least, some of the higher uh, power ones, you'll see what I mean by sort of, um, by comparison. So if I go up to, say, heavy missile launchers here, and we look again, I've been used, looking at the Republic Fleet, so we'll look at Republic Fleet here. And you see here the explosion velocity, rather than 150 meters per second, is only 81 meters per second, which means other ships are going to be able to outrun that quite effectively. The explosion radius of 140 meters, that explosion radius of 140 meters means that that explosion radius is going to be bigger than my Tal War. My Tal War, therefore, is going to take less damage from a Republic Fleet heavy missile launcher simply because it's a big explosion with a small ship going through it you just don't get hit by as much of the explosion as a larger percentage of the explosion, so it's lower damage. The explosion velocity of 81 meters per second, if my Tal War is doing 225 meters per second, then I'm going to outrun the explosion and not take much in the way of damage. I hope that kind of explains what I mean by application. Um, obviously, you can see that against a slower moving larger ship, um, that a Republic Fleet heavy missile launcher is going to do significantly more damage than a rocket is going to do, um, but obviously that it's going to struggle to hit a smaller, faster moving target, which is why then um, we're going to talk briefly about rapid light missile launchers. Now, I'm not going to say too much on this. Um, I know he and I had a little bit of a spat a couple of days ago. I, we've sorted all that. We've apologized and worked out our differences. Excoundrel is also making Eve Echo's content. Should be a link on screen now, as I mentioned his name. Go watch some of his videos, especially the ones where he is going doing high-level nullsec anomalies, combat anomalies, using a Caracal outfitted with rapid light missile launchers. Rapid light missiles, as you can see, these are medium. You put, don't put these on a destroyer. You put these onto a cruiser. What these bad boys do is essentially they've got the application of the small missiles. As you can see here, explosion radius is a, tid a tiddly 40 meters and explosion velocity is 170 meters per second. So it's a very fast explosion. It's a very small radius uh, comparatively. This thing will take out destroyers. It'll take out enemy cruisers and it fires fairly, uh, fa it's heavy hitting. Right now at this phase in the beta, if you are skilling into something like that, if you've got a Cal, if you really want to try something out, grab yourself a Caldari, um, uh, a Caracal Navy issue, equip a couple of uh, rapid light missile launchers to it, go out and blow things up and see the insane damage you can do. I would argue that it's borderline overpowered, but go check out Excoundrel's videos on that. He can explain that better than I'm going to in this video. So that's ultimately how missiles work um, and how, um, how, how they operate in the field. Now let's have a look at how I would fit out something like a Talwar. Obviously this still works with other missile boats as well. There are quite a few Kaldari ships um, and a few Galente ships that work well as missiles. Amar don't tend to have as many missile ships, but they do have a few. So if you're using Amar ships and you've spotted one you like the looks of and it's using missiles, this is what you'd do with it. So again, as usual, fit the top slots, those high slots, with whatever you can get your hands on. I've just grabbed Balefire rocket launchers because I had a load of these kicking around from a couple of uh, encounters that I'd done. I've equipped those through. Go for the best ones you can get. Um, obviously, the like the Republic Fleet are even better, uh, things like that. For the low slots, I've gone for an afterburner because I want to be able to get in and out of combat fairly swiftly. Mark V Shield Booster and Mark V Reactive Shield Hardener because as we look at the defense here, you'll see that this is very much a shield boat. Um, shield tanking is what I want to do, so I've heavily gone into shields there. 
But this little thing on the side is what I want to talk about briefly. This is a Mark V ballistic control system. It's a small module and you can fit onto a destroyer nice and easily. As it says at the bottom, it's a computer system designed for monitoring and guiding missiles in flight, allowing for superior effectiveness and lethality. Overheating it can temporarily amplify its effects. Penalty fitting more, a ship with more than one of this type of module or similar modules with the same effect will reduce the advantage gained. Now, when it says similar modules, that means a Mark III, a Mark VII, a Mark IX, um, anything that counts as a ballistic control system. If you're searching the market for ballistic control system, you'll see there's a load under one heading. Don't fit multiples because you get massive drop off on using two. But when you activate this thing, what it essentially does, as you can see here, duration activation time adjustment, your missile tubes fire faster, you get an additional bonus to your damage modifier and to, your, uh, and to the adjustment there. Basically, your missiles do more damage and they fire more frequently. And I'm going to showcase that in just a moment. As it's a destroyer, um, I'm using a small energy Nosferatu and a warp disruptor. Warp disruptor means I can really grab someone, I can fly into a belt, for spot someone there, and stop them from warping out and then hit them with my energy Nosferatu, drain their energy into my own and off we go. I hit them with my Balfire rocket launchers, do some heavy damage. As for rigs, um, again, it's a shield based ship. So defensive shield rigs as when this loads up. Again, I do apologize for my Wi-Fi. Power grid rigs. If you're going for defensive rigs, go for any of the shield based ones. For weapon rigs, obviously we can close down hybrid weapon rigs. We're not going to be looking at those. Wow, my internet is terrible today. Bye-bye hybrid weapon rigs. Close those down. Energy weapon rigs we can shut down as well. If we keep going beyond those, projectile weapon rigs. Here we go. We have missile launcher rigs. So warhead flare catalysts give you a bonus to explosion velocity. Again, that means you're going to be able to ap apply your rockets or missiles better against faster moving ships. The warhead calif uh, calefaction catalyst gives you an additional damage modifier, it just means that your missiles explode for more damage. The Warhead Rigger Catalyst um, reduces the explosion radius, again better for hitting small ships. The Fuel Cache Petition um, gives you explosion delay bonus, so you just don't, you get further into the enemy's signature before it explodes. Flight time velocity bonus modifier on the hydraulic bay thrusters means that you hit your target faster, and that's an issue I will cover in just a moment. And finally, bay loading accelerator, of course, means that you fire your missiles faster. Now, of those, the ones that I recommend ultimately will depend on what you're firing against. The flare catalyst and the rigor catalyst are both great if you're going against small, fast-moving ships. Damage is always a useful thing to have. Equip it to your heart's content, work through those rigs, and figure out what you want from there. Anyway, now I've just mentioned there is one problem with missiles. It's actually two problems, and it comes down to how missiles are used in combat. So I'm going to undock, I'm going to fly off to this particular mission, and then I'm going to showcase missiles in action and talk about what I mean there. Now, as I fly into this, uh, into this combat encounter, I just want to say, as I said, there is one big problem with missiles, and that is the problem of overkill. Turret damage is applied instantly. As soon as the turret fires, it applies its damage to the target straight up, straight down. You fire, it hits or it misses, and you're done with it. Now, you'll see that as I start to, when it lets me, as I start to orbit this particular ship, I'm going to fire, open fire, add my energy Nosferatu. You'll see here the missiles fire, they travel and then they hit, or in this case, miss because I'm outside of range. Just want to showcase straight off here, you see that I'm not hitting just yet because I'm not in range of the ship. The missiles are dying. Now that I'm in range, you see the missiles fly. Once they hit the ship and apply, then the damage is applied. Now, this sometimes happens that, like, now you should see, possibly. There we are. I have fired a second volley of missiles against a destroyer wreck. Because if the distance is far enough between you and your target, Ultimately, you kind of, you fire your, you fire your rockets, and while they're flying to the target, you fire your next bout of rockets. If the ship is destroyed between those bouts, you've wasted a bout of rockets. And in a situation like here, you can see I've got five enemy ships against me. Um, I am going to lock on with all of these, uh, start using the shields, and I'm going to put that drone, uh, sorry, drone damage amplifier, the missile ballistic control system on. You'll see that here, there is every possibility of me overkilling a target. As I'm going round, you'll see that here, off those missiles go. They hit their target at a bit of distance. Out of range, so now they're actually going to start hitting and doing damage. There we go. You'll see they've hit. My next one's fire. They hit. My next one's fire. 
My next ones have actually fired onto a target that is already destroyed. You saw that? That's The target is already destroyed, but I wasted an extra volley. That's a volley that could have been going up against the next ship that I'm firing at, but it's wasted. That means I'm in combat longer. I'm taking damage for longer. That can be a problem with rockets and missiles, so that is something that you do want to just pay attention to. Be aware that rockets and missiles, compared to turrets, often do overkill. Now, with something like the rapid light missile launches, the rapid launches, they ultimately hit with the damage of their current thing. So, uh, rapid light are a medium uh, type of launcher. They will hit with kind of the damage of a medium missile, but at the speed and application of a light missile, which means they have an incredible amount of alpha strike. They do incredible damage very quickly in one hit. And I need to approach this particular one there. Let's move in on that destroyer wreck and loot that as well. So do just be aware that yes, um, overkill is a thing when it comes to missiles. You'll need to just consider that as a as something just to be aware of. It's not usually a huge issue, but if you need to hit something quickly and get away, um, be aware that if you don't kill it, you may end up doing overkill. If like your missile is going to do say 100 damage and your target's only got five left, you fire your first bout of missiles. Um, that just before they hit the target, you hit your second bout of missiles goes, the target takes 100 damage and is destroyed, the second load of missiles hits and are wasted and could have been doing something else. But anyway, that's ultimately the only negative really to missiles. Right now, as I said in the beta, they are a little bit overpowered, um, so very, very great to have on something like a Caracal. Now, before we wrap this up, of course, I'm going to talk about skills. If we come into our weapon technology tree and into missiles, you'll see small missile operation. Of course, this is going to be the most important one to start with, straight up and down. Once this is, get this to at least level four, um, then move into uh, the small missile upgrades, get that to level four, and um, follow that 80-20 rule. I go small missile operation four, small missile upgrade four, then missile operation five, then advanced small missile operation four, then I'll get the missile upgrade as well. The reason I suggest that order, small missile operation, straight up at level 5, you can see that is 20% uh, missile damage, 20% velocity, and 20% flight time. Your missiles are longer range and they deal more damage. At level 4, that's 16, 15, and 10. That final level takes a long time to level up, or a lot of skill points if you've got the bonus spares, just for a, a case of 4% uh, 4 missile damage, 5% velocity, um, and 10% time. It's very worth getting, but get at least to the 4 first. Small missile upgrade, on the other hand, you'll see that ultimately what this does is give you additional damage and reduces the explosion radius, meaning that you hit uh, faster route, uh, sorry, smaller targets better. This is, means it's better for hitting small targets. Um, the small missile operation makes it better for hitting d at range and just maximum damage. So small missile upgrade, ultimately I've gone into it for the damage um, and for hitting far uh, smaller, faster moving targets, but you may decide just to go straight in for the damage. Now you see as well that obviously if we look at medium missile damage and that here, it's the same kind of thing. So if you're going into a Caracal, you're going to want medium missile operation, advanced missile, expert missile, that kind of thing. Medium missile upgrade again, just for the explosion radius. If you find you're going up against a lot of destroyers, medium missile upgrade is going to be important just because you want to be able to hit those larger targets, um, uh, those smaller targets, sorry. And that's that. Now, just to show you quickly, as I've said, go watch Excoundrel's video for the main info on this. But if we jump into the ship tree, go to Kaldari, and then across to the side here, you'll see that these are like the Caracals. Caracal trainer is all right. It's not overly great. It's a decent enough start, but it's quickly outclassified by the Caracal once you have the medium missile operation skills uh, going there. Medium missile damage, medium missile flight time. Um, then again, the Caracal Navy issue. This is the real meaty one. 10% medium missile damage, 10% medium missile flight time. Don't worry about the scan resolution or uh, sensor strength. Not overly important, but you've got four high slots there. Those four high slots you want to put on a rapid light missile launcher. Why do I say a rapid light missile launcher? Yes, the skill applies. There we are. Medium missile damage applies to Mark 7 rapid light missile. Of course, it will apply to the lower marks as well, but rapid light missile launches are affected by that skill, meaning that they hit ridiculously hard um, and will hit slow uh, the small targets as well. So they are great for going out into anomalies where you're up against other cruisers and up against uh, small destroyers and frigates because they can do massive damage to both of those. And being a cruiser, you're nice and survivable. 
Anyway, that really does just about wrap up everything that I wanted to cover in this missile tutorial. I'm here drifting in space. It's 0.5, so I should be safe, but I still don't like it as a practice. So I'm going to switch off everything and head back to uh, head back to dock now that that's all done. But anyway, I do hope that has been useful as, us as usual. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Think if I missed anything. Come find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Discord, on any of those. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you want me to see. I want to see me cover next in a video. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden. And go check out Excoundrel.